So one day I had this random idea of thinking what would have happened if the 1950 championship was decided by the current point system. Well, I'm going to do a video about it now. So would Giuseppe aka Nino Farina still be champion? Or would Juan Manuel Fangio or Luigi Faglioni steal the reins from Farina? So just a bit of a disclaimer, it will be a six race season as I'm not going to count the Indy 500 race towards the championship since none of the Indy 500 drivers raced in the other six races and vice versa with the main drivers in the main championship. So the point system obviously that we will be using is the um, current point system which is 25 points for a win, 18 points for second place all the way down to 10th place where you get a point and of course now the top if you finish in the top 10 and you got the fastest lap you get a bonus point to on top of that compared to the 1950 championship where you got eight points for a win six points for second four points for third three points for fourth and two points for fifth and you got a point for the fastest lap regardless of where you finished and only your best four results would count towards the championship in 1950. Round one. The first ever race of the inaugural Formula One season at Silverstone in what would be the start of Alfa Romeo domination as they locked out the front row of the grid with Farina on pole. It would be a close affair between the Alphas, but Farina would clinch the first win of the inaugural Formula One season followed by Fagioli. Reg Parnell would round up the, pod the podium, finishing third, while Fangio would retire with an oil pipe problem. Farina takes control of the revised championship standing, with Joe Fry and Brian Shaw Taylor rounding up the standings with half a point each due to the two of them driving the same car, hence the points were split. There was to be just a one week break, as the very next week, the Monaco Grand Prix was held, and on the very first lap, saw half the field get wiped out due to a wave hitting the harbour at the back corner. I'm really not making this up, this really did happen. This wave forced Farina to retire out the main championship contenders. And Fangio, who got pole by a whopping 2.6 seconds, also decimated the field by winning the race by a full lap with Alberto Ascari finishing second in Ferrari's debut race in Formula 1. And Monaco local Luri Chiron who finished in third place was two laps back. Fangio and Farina are now tied both on 26 points while Fagioli and Ascari are tied both on 18 points. Bob Gerard, who actually didn't score any points in the original championship, rounds out the top five with 16 points thanks to the current point system in use here. So now skipping over the Indy 500 to the Swiss Grand Prix for round 3 and Fangio secures back to back pole positions. The race had a great head to head battle between Fangio and Farina until Fangio unfortunately retired with an electrical problem. Farina would then hold on to win the Swiss Grand Prix from a fast approaching Fagioli by only 4 tenths of a second. Despite being a lap back, Louis Rosier claimed his first podium of the season, helped by Fangio and Ascari retirements. Now looking at the championship, Farina is the sole leader of the championship once again with 52 points, with Fagioli moving into second place on 36 points, followed by Fangio, whose points, whose only points rather, came from just the run race in Monaco. Rosier and Prince Bira now complete the top five. We are now in the second half of the season with round four at Spa in what would be a race with just 14 cars. But the race still went as expected with Alfa Romeo dominating proceedings all the way from start to finish with Fangio taking a well needed win with Fagioli 14 seconds behind. Farina unfortunately suffered a gearbox problems and relinquished a podium spot to Louis Rosier. Farina still had the lead in the championship despite the fourth place finish which was helped by the fact that he also got the fastest lap, giving him the bonus point. Fagioli is now only 11 points back and Fangio 14 points back, as the season st now enters the penultimate round. The penultimate round at the French Grand Prix saw one driver dominate the entire weekend. This was arguably Fangio's best race weekend all season, seeing him get the hat-trick in convincing fashion. Fagioli once again finished second, while Peter Whitehead held off a charging Robert Marzon to finish third after starting from 18th position. Farina had to settle for seventh with a fuel pump issue. 
Now, as we head into the final race of the season, Fangio now leads on 77 points, with Fagioli on 72 and Farina on 71, following very closely in what promises to be a thrilling conclusion for the 1950 championship. With the final round of the championship at Monza, all three Alpha drivers were still in contention to win the championship, but it was Fangio that drew first blood, qualifying on pole, but it was Farina who flew into the lead soon after the start of the race. In a shock turn of events, Ascari would actually overtake Farina to take the lead, but this joy for the Ferrari driver was short-lived as Farina took back the lead due to Ascari's problems with his car. Fangio retired after lap 23 with gearbox issues. However, the kindness of one of teammate Piero Taruffi, who gave his car to Fangio, allowed him to re-enter the race. However, this would be in vain as Fangio would again retire from the race. Farina would then t go on to take the race win and with it the championship. Ascari and Dorino Serafini would both finish second as they both drove the same car, and Fagioli, who had a quiet race, finished in third. Here are the standings of the top 10 drivers. And just like in the real championship, Farina wins the championship in the final race. He finishes with 96 points. But unlike the real championship, Fagioli would benefit from consistent finishes, which sees him end up in second position for the championship with 87 points. Conversely, in the current day points format, Fangio would see his retirements have a more severe effect on his championship tally as he only finishes third with 77 points. In the original championship, Fangio only lost out on the title by three points. And here are the original championship standings for you to compare with this remodified championship. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.